أرجو أن أشكر سعادة السيد جان كلود. I thank Mr. Jean Claude Felix de Rego, head of the delegation of Benin, for his statement, and I now give the floor to Ms. Maria Elena Lopez de Jesus Pires, to chair of the delegation of Timor Leste, and I invite her to address the General Assembly. Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Fernandez Pinoza Garces, President of the General Assembly, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. I have the honor to address the 73rd United Nations General Assembly on behalf of His Excellency Dionisio Bab Suarez, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Cooperation of Timor Leste. First of all, allow me to join our voices to the previous speakers and to present on behalf of Timor Leste our deepest condolences to the people of Indonesia, particularly to the families of the victims of the earthquake and tsunami in Palu, Sulawesi. I would like to start by congratulating Her Excellency Mrs. Maria Fernandez Espinosa Garces on her election as President of the General Assembly and also wish her the best success in this session under the theme making the United Nations relevant for all people, global leadership, and shared responsibility for peaceful, equitable, and sustainable societies. Taking into account that this is only the fourth time in the history of this organization that a woman leads this important body, I believe that the President will also be an important role model for women and girls worldwide. Madam President, I would like to assure you that you can count on Timor Leste's support. I would also like to extend our gratitude to His Excellency Mr. Miroslav Lachek for all his work towards sustaining peace and preventing conflict. Timor Leste also commends the manner in which the election of the 70th president of the 73rd president of the general assembly took place under the leadership of president Lachak, which provided an excellent precedent for future elections madam president distinguished delegates we appreciate the theme chosen for this session and we believe that it is most appropriate this theme draws our attention to the need to unite peoples at a time when we are witnessing a gradual but unquestionable breakdown of the world order, increasing even more the inequality and insecurity and further undermining faith in national and international institutions. At a junction when the solidarity amongst peoples assumes extreme importance in the global agenda, Feeling of helplessness and impotence can be seen with which divides people and provokes hostility. This is why the theme of this session is so important and appropriate because of the focus is on inclusiveness, equality and global leadership. Timor Leste is undoubtedly the leading example of the importance of an order based on international law. Next year, our nation celebrates the 20th anniversary of the popular consultation organized by the United Nations, in which our people voted courageously for the independence. We cannot forget nor fail to pay tribute to then Secretary General, our dear friend Kofi Annan. It was with deep sorrow and sadness that our people received the news of his death. As Secretary General of the United Nations, Kofi Annan played a leading role in conducting the negotiations between Portugal and Indonesia, which culminated in the signing of the agreement of 5th of May 1999, giving rise to popular consultation in Timor Leste. This is a significant milestone that we will also commemorate next year. Recently, the United Nations played again a major role in Timor Leste's future. For the first time, a conciliation commission established in 2016 under the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea succeeded in the positive resolution of a long standing dispute between Timor Leste and Australia 
about the definition of maritime boundaries, a process that take that took about a year and a half and culminated in a new maritime boundary treaty signed in this building on March 6 of this year with the presence of His Excellency the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres. This new treaty allowed us to consolidate national sovereignty and establish an important model for the peaceful resolution of internal international disputes. At a time of increasing global geopolitical tensions over maritime disputes, the success of the first conciliation process in history assume, assumes an unprecedented international significance. Timor-Leste encourages other state members to consider this mechanism for the peaceful settlement of maritime disputes. We believe that this mechanism will play an important role in appeasing global tensions on our seas. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, our world faces many challenges which can be effectively resolved through dialogue, cooperation, and based on international law. One of the main challenges of our times is without a doubt climate change. This is an issue that Secretary General Antonio Guterres has defined as the de defining issue of our time. Timor Leste is confident that the international community will act uniformly to respond to this existential threat to our planet. I take this opportunity to highlight the importance of an active and extensive cooperation to pursue an urgent and real action that exists among small island developing states, including those in the Pacific region who are particularly vulnerable to the effects of the climate changes. Madam President, ladies and gentlemen, I also would like to emphasize a fundamental issue which also requires all the attention of the international community, and that is global migration. Conflicts, wars, situations of inequality, and climate change result in an intense migratory movement throughout the world. Timor Leste and the countries of uh, G7 Plus know that uh, there cannot be sustainable development without peace. That is why we are aware that the 17 objectives of sustainable development will not be attainable if we will prevent us from building inclusive societies. We hope that the uh, evaluation of the 2030 Agenda will take into consideration these considerations, that the vulnerable that the fragile and vulnerable countries will not be left behind. Madam President, my country welcomes the reforms of the United Nations system under the leadership of the Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Following the implementation of the plan to enhance the role of the United Nations Resident Coordinator, Timor Leste will contribute a modest amount over the next five years. We also support the reforms without reservations under the Peace and Security Pillar. We commend the Secretary General for his initiative on action for peace, including the Declaration of Shared Commitments on UN Peacekeeping Operations, which Timor-Leste has signed. In order to contribute to peace operations, Timor-Leste is currently investing in the preparation of its police and military personnel, to increase their capacity and the possibility to contribute in the near future to the United Nations missions. However, despite our shared efforts, we continue to see conflicts and war in the world that fill us with concern. The continuing war in Syria is a tragedy that has been causing irreparable human damage and terrible suffering for the people living in that region. Timor Last urges that the international community develop all efforts to put an end to this war and to end the deaths and the destruction of this country. The, peace term, the people of the Western Sahara are still denied their right to self-determination. We welcome the appointment of the Secretary General's personal envoy, Mr. Horst Kohler. We appeal to the Kingdom of Morocco and the Polisario Front 
to seriously dialogue in order to find a mutually beneficial political solution to enable the people of Western Sahara to exercise their right to self-determination through a referendum organized by the United Nations. Timor-Leste encourages the international community to redouble its efforts to finding, with the concerned parties, a just, peaceful, and lasting solution to the question of Palestine. We reaffirm Timor-Leste's support for the two-state solution and the urgent protection of the civilian population. Timor-Leste also remains concerned about the economic, commercial, and financial embargo imposed on the Republic of Cuba over the last six decades, which has a considerable impact on the lives of the people and the development of the country. In our region, we feel encouraged by the continued dialogue for peace and reconciliation on the Korean Peninsula, and we hope that the dialogue between the parties will bring an end to the proliferation of nuclear weapons in the region. Madam President, Please allow me to take this opportunity to talk about the situation in Timor-Leste. On May 12th of this year, we held early legislative elections. The elections were held in a peaceful environment and resulted in a new executive led by His Excellency Taur Matan Rak. After a period of economic stagnation due to the political crisis, the country is resuming its development and economic growth toward normality. The socio-economic foundations that we need to create for a prosperous and united society were already established. With the recent promulgation of the state budget, we can continue to improve our social housing and communications infrastructure, and thus develop opportunities for investment and economic development. Another important step for Timor-Leste was the government's decision to acquire 30% of the capital in the consortium that operates the Greater Sunrise Field in the Timor Sea and thus opened the possibility of bringing the pipeline to Timorese territory and the accelerated development of the South Coast. Our historic leader and former President of the Republic and Prime Minister his Excellency Shanana Guzman once again successfully conducted the negotiations. We continue to have strong relations with our neighbors, namely Indonesia and Australia, and we deepen our cooperation with the ASEAN countries and await serenely for decision about our request to accede to this organization. Timor-Leste remains committed to a strengthen ties of friendship and cooperation with the countries of the community of Portuguese-speaking countries, and hopes that the Portuguese language, which is spoken by about 250 million people worldwide, will also be an official language of the United Nations. Our country has also signed a treaty on the prohibition of nuclear weapons, and we encourage all member states to do so. Madam President, Distinguished delegates, we live in a world that is different from the post-Second World War when the United Nations was created. The current times are full of challenges, and more than ever, all of us need to be prepared to meet the challenges, the wishes and aspirations, stressing increasingly the value of multilateralism. My country firmly believes in the United Nations and in the international system. As such, we are committed to work in cooperation for the international peace, security, and prosperity, and for the well-being of humanity. Thank you very much. I thank Her Excellency Ms. Maria Elena Pires, Chair of the Delegation of Timor-Leste, for her statement. I now give the floor to His Excellency Mr. Ali Nasser Mohammed, Chair of the Delegation of the Maldives. You have the floor, Your Excellency.